Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Sorry for the long lead in. I kind of liked the end of that one, so I was really close that time. I just decided to let it. I was kind of being mellow. <laughs> so let it just kind of finish, you know, play me in, I guess, is the way, correct way to put that one. I just kind of like that riff and I like the ending of it. It's kind of kind of cool. So uh, how you doing? How's everybody doing? Hopefully you're all having a, a fantastic, what is it, Wednesday? Wednesday night? Yeah, Wednesday night. Hopefully everyone's having a good Wednesday night. In some cases, Thursday morning, right? I know in Sweden, Sydney, Sweden, 4.30 tomorrow morning. In Sydney, it's, what, 11, it was 11.30 tomorrow, right? <laughs> so I actually thought this was a old model of quad. You know, it might be. I'm not sure how long this thing has been out. I can tell you that a friend of mine, uh, Jay, he, he strongly recommended, advocated for this one. He said, man, you got to get one of those. And when I told him about the little deal I found on this one, he said, oh, I'm seriously thinking about that. And of course, this sold out pretty fast after that deal. So let's set the record straight on this. This is a, a Hawk Sport. There's a higher end. They have a Hawk Pro that's got maybe upgraded motors and I'm not sure, maybe a better flight controller. And the new, the Hawk, uh, the Hawk Pro has the uh, little pulsating power rings under the motors which you know whatever <laughs> that's fine i'm not i'm not much of a racer so this i'm sure this will be plenty uh for me to handle but uh what happened was get fpv was doing like this summer sale and get fpv is a pretty well respected uh, rc shop in the u.s and uh they were running a sale of 30 percent off so this thing only goes for about 190 bucks and at 30% off, it was they were shipping it out the door delivered for like 150 or something. So that seemed like a great deal. And that's why I finally jumped on it because my buddy Jay said I needed to have one. And with that price, you know, I'd been watching this one for a little while. And when I saw that price, I just couldn't refuse. I mean, I just paid for that little Tiny Hawk 2. I think I just paid like 134 And this is a full-on, you know, out, outdoor big boy quad, right? So anyway... Uh, I did get, this is a 4S version too, but, and I put a link in the description, uh, you can fly this with a 6S battery with Betaflight, because Betaflight has motor scaling, and it works. So there's a link in the description if you want to learn how to do that. I did a video on that already. And even though Get FPV is out of stock on these and you can't get the killer deal, I did go out and look around and I found a few locations, at least in the U.S., that still have this drone in stock. So if you want to get it, links for those are in the description. Those are not affiliate links either. That's just me helping you out. But uh, you're back at that 190 price point. So anyway, let's, uh, let me go through and see who's here and say hello. And Freddie jumped on it right away. If you guys are playing the first game, Freddie just spanked all of you pretty bad because he got in within a few seconds after this one posting. So good job, Freddie. Brutus checked in. He said hello about 3 a.m., so he's going to go back to sleep. <laughs> he popped in to say hi. Man, I love that kind of dedication. Good on you, Brutus. Way to go. Phil Jane from Down Under. How you doing, buddy? Glad you can make it. Adrian Mateo Drones. Hello, brother. How you doing, man? Glad you can make it. Elias, another one, another Aussie from Down Under. How you doing, Elias? Glad you can make it. Uh, I did show up in Discord for a few minutes, but I learned my lesson after last time. But when I have a video, I'm not playing in Discord anymore. i got to pay attention because... I get in Discord, we start yapping, the oh, the streaming software wants to act the fool, so it's one of those deals. Uh, is anyone hearing reverb? I don't, I, I, I hope not. I hope no no reverb. You guys are hearing some echo? Good deal. Your audio, my audio is echoing? Hmm, okay, let's see. That's unfortunate. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Hmm. Give me a second. I don't know why it would be all echoing, but give me a moment. There. Yeah, tell me if that's better. Is that better? Let's see if that's better. My audio, locked, lots of echo. Well, that sucks. So apparently it's on my end. Man, I don't know. This software is just beating me like a redheaded stepchild lately. Seems like your audio is quick echo and then almost like a reverb. I think that should fix it. You guys let me know. Technical difficulties. How's it going? It's going well. It's going well. Props off. How you doing, man? Dodge Dolze. Dol, yes. Yeah. JT. Yeah. Greetings from the Netherlands. Stray Dogs. How you doing? Why do you sound like you're in a tunnel? I don't know. Maybe I'm in a tunnel. Maybe I should get in a tunnel and my freaking software will stop acting the fool. Um, let's see. Much better. Cool. Yeah, we do echo better now. Getting better. I think it's fixed. While you said, let's see, it stops. So we're good. We're good. All right, good. Sorry. I don't know, man. This software, it's a long story. I'm sure you guys don't want to hear all the boring details, but 
I, I think I mentioned a week ago, my USB just kind of reset itself. So this, the streamer software re-added interfaces and I hid one and I thought by hiding it, it would no longer be active, but apparently that's not true. So now I'm stuck with two audio interfaces, but I've got one turned way down. So I'm going to find a way. I'll find a way to kill this thing eventually. Anyway, <laughs> well, I, I will figure it out. Can you turn the gain up? Yeah, I can turn the gain up. How's that? That a little better? Um, can you turn the gain up? You're a little soft. You have max audio there. That's as loud as I can make it. I could put my face right in front of the microphone. Okay, before I get into the drone, I did want to show you guys one other pretty cool little thing that I found. I'm going to thank Robert for this one. Robert turned me onto this. This is the TBS 69 and I just got it. I got it out of the package and took a look at it. So if you're not familiar with what this is, it is a combined Unify Pro and a TBS Crossfire in one unit, which I think is kind of cool. You know the Crossfire by itself is really small anyway, but this is also a VTX. So they send you a couple of different mounting options with a uh, with a uh, Immortal T and a SMA pigtail adapter for your VTX, your video uh, antenna. So I just got that today. I'm gonna need to play with it a little bit. I wanna see how it binds. I wanna see what the options are with the Lua script. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, we'll, we'll play with this. So I think you guys, um, uh, by the way, this needs a receiver, so it won't get this one though. Cause it already has a VTX. So anyway, that one's coming up. Be on the lookout on the channel for that. All right, let's get into the thing. Let's open the box. Dodge said, Dodge says enough screwing around, man. We've been talking about nonsense. Let's get into it. I'm just going to peel this open and right away i knew that there was a spare and uh, canopy so and they keep talking about this special mounting system but what i've seen on the pictures and the diagrams is that's like a gopro mount up front so spare canopy which is kind of cool camera hole up front that looks good and i guess this is an instruction bag with a little i mean i is that a they say that's right hand circular polarized i don't know man i don't know if i believe that a couple of decals couple spare screws uh, looks like another camera mount, which doesn't, that's not terrible. So everything looks good. Uh, support QR codes if you want to use those. So yay. Good for that. I love this kind of packing. It's hard to fault this packing because unless your box like takes a spike right through it, this is pretty good stuff because this is, and this foam, you can actually use this for other things too. Not a bad idea because this is that dense, hard, dense foam. Uh, yeah, they, they always do have that look. It's injection molded. It's kind of like this translucent gray. It looks kind of cool. I think it looks kind of cool. Uh, in terms of props, they do give you two sets. Let me flip over and let's cover some specs real quick. Um, I'm going to bring up the blackboard and uh, let's see. Yeah, okay. We look okay on the audio. I'm checking audio now that we've been, I, I'm gun shy about audio. So real quick on the specs, this is uh, this quad uses 2207, 2400 KV. Remember what I told you, you can run 6S if you want. They do have a 6S version of this quad that runs a 1700 KV set of motors. The flight controller is an F405 Matek. They call it a mini Magnum 3 F4. The ESC is 3 to 6 S and it supports BL Heli 32, which is really cool because that would hopefully you can get that bi-directional one shot, which is good. The camera is a CATS analog, so CATX Turbo Micro F2, 1200 TV line with a 200 milliwatt VTX. Uh, the, the props I'm about to get into those are the Avon Scimitar props. So the five by three by three and a five by 2.8 by three. So a little bit slower, I guess the spare canopy and the antenna, which we already saw. So that's what you get in the box. And of course, some instructions, some other things. So we'll get back to the props. One set of props. These are the, uh, Avon scimitar props. I, I'm not sure which set that is, but you get one set there. That's the, we'll call it the 2.8 and this one yeah, that's the, that feels like the three because that definitely feels like a more aggressive pitch to me. Slightly more aggressive, not a lot, but also look, there's a little difference in the blade width too. I don't know if you guys can see that, but you see the width on this one, the more aggressive one, that's a little thicker uh, hub down here. And then on, on the smaller prop, it's a little less. So anyway, two sets of props, bright orange, that's kind of good. And like I said, the packing looks, it looks really good in there. So let me pop this out. And uh, we'll get rid of them. I think that's it. I'm just going to make sure that's it in the box. Yeah, that's it. Nothing else in the box. We'll get rid of that. Okay, there's the quad. Now, 
Did anyone say it yet? I don't think anyone said it yet. 6S is nice. Oh, it's a 6. Well, drone pilot, this one is a 4S, but like I said, you can do motor scaling in beta flight. So it's no problem fi flying this on 6S. And of course, the ESC does support 6S. So I think maybe that was your comment, I guess. So yeah, we can this this one could fly in 6S if I wanted it to. No no worries because I know that motor scaling works. Okay, on the scale, they say this is 265 grams dry, so I'm going to pop it on there and we'll take a look. And 270, fine. And let's stick some props on there. So we'll stick uh I'll take the uh I'll take the aggressive set. We'll stick those on there, the big set. Okay. So here are the props. We'll just pop those on there. And let's see. I'm trying to get them so they don't fall off. There they go. There we go. Okay, so 291 with the props. And then if you want to use a 1550 4S battery, so we're, we're at 290 dry, and we'll stick the battery on. And that looks like 480. The only thing left to do is add an antenna and a receiver. So I'll go ahead and stick the antenna on. And I don't have a receiver handy, so I can't give you the receiver, but you know, the Crossfires or the Express LRS are real small. So we'll just stick that on there. And we'll give, I don't know, three grams. We you guys, th three grams, you think? So 486 total, all up. That's the fly weight, and that'd be ready to go. So let's see. Uh, let me go back and check the comments here. Um, can you turn up the game? Okay, we got that. Let's go open the box. Got that. What's up, everyone? Fellow FPV Ripper says props off. Stray Dog, TX, RX, like IRC Ghost, Proton 2020, and IRC Tramp Nano Combo. Yeah, I know. I'm kind of digging this, man. I, I want to try it out. I might put this on. I'm thinking about putting it on my uh, my test platform, and that's the Tyro. Um, although the Tyro video and Express LRS is working pretty good, so I don't know. I'll figure something out. I'll test it on something. Uh, let's see. Uh, same concept looks good. Emacs canopies, yep, we touched on that already. Good package protection. Yeah, you can't fault the protection, man. That's about as good as it can be done. I mean, without getting ridiculous, right? Uh, aggressive props, I think. Yeah, these are the bigger ones. So these are the uh, the three inch, I think. So you get, like I said, you get two sets of props, two point eight and three on the pitch, and I'm sure that these are the the five by threes. I'm sure of that. Um, yeah, they do. Uh, Stray Dog says it looks a little like the beefed up tiny. Yeah, the the beef the beefed up Tiny Hawk freestyle props. It's exactly what what they look like. Yeah, the scimitar or same same color orange too. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right, let's see. Always like the Avon Avon props. Always seemed grippy for lack of a better description. Nice. Brian Flores says yo, how you doing, Brian? Love my Emacs Hawk Five. Good. Yeah, you like it. My my friend Jay says this thing takes a beating. He gets out in the desert with his and tears it up. And he says, man, it just if it crashes, he walks over, picks it up, dusts off the props, and throws it in the air again, and off he goes. He says this thing is just rugged, and as rugged gets. Um, let's take a look at the measurements on the arms real quick because, oh, really? Are we going to have a dead battery? Of course we're going to have a dead battery. Oh, no, we're not. I know how to fix you. This thing. My battery cap. Can you believe that? It's being flaky. I need a new caliper. I need to get a new caliper. This one's annoying. All right, let's check it. So we got on the arms... We have 4.9, so 5 millimeter on the arms. On the bottom plate, for those of you who are interested in this kind of thing, 2 mil on the bottom plate. And on the top, I guess it doesn't matter because the battery doesn't go up there anyway. So the canopy is already in place. This thing looks like it's pretty much ready to go. It's got a micro. Is that a micro? Hold on. I got, got you know, this is what sucks about getting old. You need glasses. Yeah, that's a micro USB connector on the bottom. I'd say as far as the build goes, I, I, uh, they've got a little silk screen on the bottom. They've got some shrink wrap for the wires. They've got the grip tape or the grip rubber for the battery. The, I'm not real sure about the capacitors hanging right there next to the battery strap. That's a little distressing to me. I don't know how much I like that. Um, the XT60 and the XT60 is secured too. They did a nice job strapping this down. Uh, no protection on the arm, but you've got a low-hanging battery, so you ne don't necessarily need that. And the battery strap is kind of grippy. It's got this kind of rubberized polish on the bottom, so that looks good. Uh, I will be checking, in fact, hey, how about that? Look at this. I wonder if I have the right one. No. Oh, I do. How about that? All right. So I do have one that's 
Uh, I don't know if that's the right one or not. Nah, I don't think so. That one feels a little too big. Um, but I'll be checking those. Make sure you check these guys. Make sure you torque those down. Just make sure they're sealed. Don't break the seal. <laughs> if they have Loctite, don't break it. <laughs> don't do that. But um, just make sure you give them a good check. I will be giving a good check to make sure they're torqued down. I don't see any on the bottom. I don't see any screw heads or anything. It's all flush mount. So nothing looks like it's going to be in contact with the battery. So bottom line, the battery mounting area looks nice and clean. That's the bottom line. Uh, as far as arm change outs go, the uh, rubber mount goes around the two screws that it looks like. I'm not sure if that screw has to come out or not. That one definitely has to come out. Um, but it doesn't look like it's going to be too much of a problem to change the arm if it comes down to that. Take the motor off and, and even the motor wires on the ESC look like they're easily accessible. So everything looks really good there. Hex heads holding on the canopy. A couple of nuts holding on the canopy on the back. The uh, video SMA adapter is on there nice and snug. So I'd say, I mean, overall, that's clean. It's very clean. Uh, you know, I'm looking for things that might get hung up when you're using it or if you crash and nothing, man, it's all very tucked away in there. It's a very tidy build. As far as I can see, it looks really good. The, uh, of course the camera angle, that's the Cadex, uh, turbo micro F2, 1200 TV line. They got that sucker aimed up, man. <laughs> that thing, you, you can tell that is horizontal. I, let me, <laughs> that's horizontal. So this thing, this thing is uh, intended to go. It's intended to cruise. No, no question about it. That is def. They definitely have that aimed up. And of course, there's a little camera cover on the top there. So I don't know. As far as first look goes, man, it's lightweight. This thing is all business. Like it's like nothing there that's not supposed to be. Um, I do like the flight stack arrangement too. It looks very clean. The USB is easily accessible. It's easy to get to that one right here. Nothing's in the way. Um, the, the VTX is up top. I'll be curious. I will check the book and make sure this one's not locked. Uh, this one only goes up to 200 milliwatts too, just so you know, in case you're into that kind of thing. But this really isn't designed to be a range flyer. You know, this is meant to be, you know, cruising around local. So there you go. There's the first look. Um, this thing, I don't know how I feel about that. I guess it's, you know, if it's meant to be local and if it's polarized, um, I guess it'll be fine. We'll see. I'll test it. I'll test it out of the box. And if it works out, I'll let you know. If it doesn't work out, I'll let you know that too. So let's see. A uh, drone pilot says nice, lightweight. Um, should oh, I lost it? Where'd it go? I lost. I scroll. I hit the little scroll button. There we go. I got it. Nice weight should really rip around on 2207. I have a seven inch quad with 2207. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, this should. Yeah, I, I'd expect this would be a lot of fun. Um, one thing I, I do get a kick out of punching the quads and leaning them over and getting them going. It's, it's fun listening to how they sound. So I, you know, I'm kind of having fun with that aspect of it when I get a chance to fly. That is, uh, Brian says he converted it from analog to DJI Caddx. Oh, that'd be cool. Flies up, files up on Thingiverse. Cool, man. Thanks for letting me know. Um, that's another one that I've been kind of looking for is the Caddx systems with the nano, um, pro those are hard to find right now, man. Hard to find a nano pro. And, when I say hard, I mean, I basically mean impossible. I can't find the Nano Pro, and I, I really don't want a, uh, sorry, a, a Nebula Pro, not a Nano Pro. It's I don't want a Nebula Nano or a Nano V2. I really, if I could do Caddx, which I like, I'd like to have the, the Pro. Um, let's see, Game of Drones, will this support Crossfire or, or AM Plus? I don't know what AM Plus is. The old one doesn't. And RHCP is red and LHCP is white usually. Yeah, um, I'm sure I'm sure it'll support Crossfire. I'll have to find a place to mount it. But yeah, I'm sure it'll support Crossfire. Um, can't be too hard to find. It, well, you have to. You got to find somewhere to stick the receiver, right? Got to go in there somewhere. So I'll figure it out. Uh, kind of baffles me how 5-inch quads shrunk pretty significantly. Had my racer side-by-side -side with another 5-inch freestyle build a few years ago. Old 5-incher almost looks like 7-inch. Yeah, isn't that something? Yeah, 5-inch, it's real. they're tiny. I agree. This is kind of small for a 5-inch quad. Like, I've got, like, other quads that are 5 inches that look a lot bigger than this, but... You know, I guess if you're going to race, I mean, if you were, if we were to go ahead and put the props on here, let's take a look at that. Let's take a look. I bet they're close. <laughs> so like, you know, on a lot of the other uh, freestyle and long range and cinematic quads and stuff like that, I don't care if the props are not in order. It doesn't matter. I'm just testing. But yeah, that, there's your clearance, man. That's why <laughs> they're real close. And as far as the body goes, that's pretty close too, man. There's like no, yeah, there's no space. That's why. 
So on the more cinematic types, you know, they they try and make room for those to um, get the camera cl a clear shot and not have props in view. So I think that's one of the reasons they separate those out a little bit more. But they say five inch. This thing is just five inch. So there you go. There's a look at it with the props on to give you an idea in terms of clearance of what you're looking at. So the back blades, again, I, I'm sure the props are messed up. And here, my OCD doesn't like it. So, um, did I have that wrong? That looks like that. Yes. And that one looks wrong. What did I have wrong here? I don't know. Did I mix them up? No, I didn't mix them up. That, oh, that's the one I got wrong. There it is. I, fa I found it. I found it. There we go. My OCD can't take it, man. <laughs> but there you go. <laughs> There's the props. So yeah, very small clearance in the space here. Nothing, virtually nothing up front, very small space in the back and then tip to tip. Yeah, that's, that's why that's, that's why, that's why the older ones look like they're so much bigger. You probably have a little more clearance. Sorry about that guys. My OCD got the better of me. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, love my Emacs. Okay. Nice flight. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to catch up to comments here. Kind of baffles me. All right. We got that. Dr David Knutes. David says hit the like button. You guys listen to David, man. He knows what he's talking about. Thanks, David. Appreciate you, buddy. Thanks for being the like whip tonight. And then, uh, damn auto incorrect law XM plus. Oh, XM plus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure it's, it, it would work with an XM plus or, or crossfire. No, no problems there. All right. Let's see. Um, I think Emacs is the only way to get a Nebula Pro these days. Yeah, I found I found Nebula Pros at um, <laughs> I hate giving away my sources because when I do and they get them in stock, you guys buy them on me. Uh, but it's it was uh, Defiant RC. That's where I got it. The last one I got was Defiant RC. They had a Nebula Pro in stock. Um, I only got one, but they haven't had them in stock since then. So drone pilot says five millimeter arms, two mil bottom plate is chunky. That's going to be sweet and in, in tune. Yeah. Hey, that reminds me drone pilot and I have been fiddling with motors and looking at motor noise and uh, I will test this. So you guys can count on that. I'll give that feedback before I fly it or after, you know, during the flight video. But one thing that I have found on my, on my chimera, which I have made in, by the way, is that the Emacs motors are super quiet. So I will test them. And these are not the eco twos though. These are, these are the first look like first gen ecos. So they just say eco, not eco two. And you can tell by the motor cam, they're a little bit older styling, but I'm sure they'll be fine. I'm sure most of the, most of the materials probably made the same. So I'm sure they'll be fine. Uh, stray dogs is kind of weird spot for the caps. Yeah. <laughs> for the caps. Yeah, I guess I'm not sure. Uh, caps, weird spot for the caps. What caps are you talking about? I'm not sure. Are we talking about the, you know, I don't know. I don't know what caps you're talking about, man. Help me out. Uh, so basically it's almost identical to the old one. I reckon, I reckon the, this, I don't think this is a, like a, a V2. So I, I think that from what I've seen, all of these Emacs Hawk, racers all pretty much look the same the the major changes come in the electronics and the motors so um i didn't like the oh the capacitors i got you the capacitors yes i know yeah i know that's that is see there's a little bit of a lag between when i get to comments and when we've covered material but yeah that is kind of a strange place i mean normally you see the capacitors in the in the back so um or or tucked in right near the board so that is kind of strange Hopefully they'll hold up, but it, they don't look like they're too hard to replace. So I guess, I guess the, we'll see. They do have some carbon protection right there. So the, the frame does wrap around them. So they won't take any hits from the side. It's the battery strap that has me concerned. There's going to be constant movement there. So yeah, we'll see. All right. Um, uh, don't like the capacitor, but I'll bend those. Yes. I'd bend those even if I tried not to. Yeah. That's my point, man. I'll probably wind up, they'll probably wind up getting bent. You fiddle with that battery strap and getting the batteries. That's probably going to happen. Uh, I fly 50 degrees for racing. Yeah. That's something I'll have to just get used to. But, um, you know, I've I think on the Chimera seven, it was actually tilted forward quite a bit. And on my first landing, I had to, I, I, I don't think I had it angled up that high and it took me a little it took me a little while on that first landing to get used to that idea of you know almost looking at the sky trying to set it down but um i'll get there i'll get there it's fun it'll be fun to tinker with this uh they have side mounted the esc yeah um side mounted well obviously yeah i think so i think so 
that's probably why all the wires are fore and aft and under the cover too as well instead of on the side right um Caddix have the starlight available. Yeah, if you're in the night flying, I guess that starlight's pretty good. I've never, or, you know, dim flying, I guess. I haven't tried that one yet, but I hear that's pretty good and it seems to get good reviews. Um, you're showing some of the DVR sometime when you fly it when it's not raining loud here in Dutch. Yeah, um, I do have some DVR from the Chimera. Um, I think what I'll probably do is use that for, because it was, uh, so the Chimera Maiden, let's, I'll, talk, I'll tell you guys a little bit about that. It went fine. You know, the, the, the quad flew fine, but here's the issue. Rain has turned everything soaking wet, and we I was flying with Edge, with Express LRS 2.4, and with an Isheen radio on a brand new quad with DJI. So... Um, on top of all of that, it was soaking wet everywhere. So I, I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to lie. I was a little sketched out, man. I had this drone up in the air. I'm flying it around and I'm like, man, if anything goes wrong, I'm in trouble. Um, I didn't really want to test the GPS. I didn't want to fiddle around with having to land in the, in the grass because I knew if I did, I was going to destroy electronics. So I really kind of kept it close nearby, near the runway. And, um, so, but I did do the maiden and I flew it for a couple battery packs. So it does work, but the video, it's not, I don't, it's not intriguing. So it's not like, it's not like a video where you really get to see a lot. So I think what I'll do is instead of making it a standalone video, at least initially is I'll just put it up on a pilot jam and say, here it is, it flew. And then when I get a chance to, you know, when we dry out a little bit here, then I'll do some flying. I also want to make a long range pack for it. So I'll do some flying and, you know, get it out down, down to the other end of the field and do some video and that kind of stuff. But it flew really well. I was very pleased with the, with the flight performance. Everything on it was pretty good. Uh, let's see. I like those Emacs props on my tiny Hawk, but beefed up a bit on the five inch racer. Wouldn't they, w wouldn't they be power suckers, lipo dreamers? Um, but beefed up on a five inch. Well, I mean, you could, you could always slow things down with the 2.8 pitch, but I think, I, I don't know. I, I could, I don't know that the eco motors are less or more efficient than any other motor, but it's worth a try. It might be a neat experiment just to run the 2.8s and see how they do against the three inch props. That might be fun to do. That might be, that might be a worthwhile experiment. Um, when, when I do airplane stuff, I do thrust testing and efficiency testing, but with quads a little bit harder to do unless I tear them down. And I really, I, I just, I kind of get a little aggravated at the idea of stripping it down just for a motor test because the motor tests don't, they're not, they don't get a lot of hits. So there's a very small group of people that are really interested in that type of data. Uh, let's see. Um, sucks battery died in my phone. What did I miss? <laughs> well, props off. The good news is it'll be there for you, man. You go back and recap. Uh, I see they locked in landing is easy. Like kicking back in your old chair, just lean back. To like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's just one of those things I got to practice. Right. Um, this is PMP, right? What receiver we use? Yeah, this is PMP, Dave. I think, um, I, I have a crossfire handy, um, but that might be a little much for this. So I, th I'm actually, what I'm really thinking is, uh, I might get another express LRS 2.4. Um, I've been doing fine with that. It's on the chimera or another thing I might do is take the 2.4 off the chimera, replace it with a crossfire and then put the 2.4 on this one. It's not really a question of range for me. It's a question of size. That Express LRS is super tiny and would easily fit in this canopy somewhere versus the Crossfire. That's a little bit more, you know, with an antenna with one of these Immortal T's, that's a good antenna for a seven inch frame. So it's trying to stick one of these. I could do it, but why? You know, it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to be local. So why not just use the little Express LRS with that SMT antenna that's basically non-existent? That'd be a very convenient way to deal with this situation. So... Uh, let's see. When are you going to put this one up? Put this one it up. When are you going to put this one up? I guess, uh, I don't know, maybe over the weekend, Bill. It's not going to take much. I can tell you that. I'll get into beta flight and just do my little setup, put my OSD configuration in and um, put my radio configuration in. It doesn't take much. I mean, this has got, you know, it's easy. It's like all you really got to do is put props on it and stick an antenna on. Oh, and the unlock, the VTX unlock. You got to do that. Uh, by the way, if you don't give, you guys don't know about that, when it comes to analog drones, let me give you a little piece of advice. When you're first setting them up, make sure, forget about Betaflight. Betaflight has the ability to do power settings, and, and it's good. It works. When it works, it works. Um, but the problem is that if, you're, if you get one of these VTXs that's locked at the factory in low power mode because of the ham rules, 
then you really got to find out how to unlock it first by hand. And the way, what you really want to do is look at the LEDs. So when you unlock it, look at what the LEDs do and make sure the LEDs are showing you power changes when you change the power. If you do that, and then you go back to Betaflight and set your power levels up in Betaflight so you can change power and you watch the LEDs, um, if, you, if you move your switch on the radio and those LEDs move cor corresponding to that switch, then you know for sure that you're changing power levels. Um, another option is, especially for a 200 milliwatt uh, VTX, and if you're not racing with other people, just lock it at 200 and don't worry about it. But the the lesson in all of it is you can go into Betaflight and add the VTX power level change configurations, and then you'll see on the OSD, it'll tell you, oh yeah, we're running at 25 or 100 or 200, but if those LEDs don't change, you're not. So Betaflight will lie to you. So just make sure that you understand how to change power levels and what your LEDs should look like. And when you are confident in that scheme, then go ahead and use your switch configurations in beta flight and make sure your LEDs match what your switch is sending. Okay. Just a little, that's a little lesson learned on my part. You got to make sure you do that. Um, Stray Dog FPV says, I got one final question before I got to go for stroll with a dog. Is Edge TX already reliable enough to go with? You? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm in fact, um, I, the reason that I ran Edge TX with my Chimera build was to show and, and give a proof of concept that um, I was willing to go with it. So I put, I put Edge TX on a new radio with a new receiver, a new transmitter. And a new firmware <laughs> and and i launched it on a seven inch quad with the dji air unit in it and it was a full dji air unit too it wasn't it wasn't a cheapy it wasn't an, it wasn't a cadex nebula nano it was the real deal so um my my answer and what i'll say about edge tx is that uh as you watch the developer space on that on that firmware and the bugs we're not i'm not seeing people come in i'm not seeing people come in and say that edge tx crashed anything there there are bug reports you know sure now let me be clear about something else too i'm not one of the developers i'm not i'm simply an observer and a tester i do some testing and i give them my feedback and i keep a very close eye and i ask them questions you know i do ask them questions about what's going on but i am not on the development team so um there is separation right i have no vested interest in edge tx it's not my project right i'm simply an observer and I'm reporting back what I learn and what I find. So I just want to make that clear. But um, yeah, I would say Edge TX um, is good to go. Now, what I would suggest you do, though, is I would suggest you don't go in all the way in on the deep end because there are some things that are missing and and they're working on all of it. And, um, you know, so I would suggest that you just, you know, pick a, a, a plane or a quad or two and, and run with it for a little while. Take, take something that you're familiar with that you can fly well and go out and test it and, you know, judge for yourself. But what I can say after my, my own use in, in operations and production is that I have no fear about the stability of the kernel, right? The, the operating system itself. And I don't have any fear about the radio link technology that that is in Edge TX, which is really OpenTX. Not like they rewrote the whole thing. Um, so I've been using it, but I would encourage you guys, you know, test, you know, test, and don't don't jump off the deep end, but get it, install it, try it out on a few things, and 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 work on it, and see how see how you like it. You might find out that it does everything you need it to. You might find out that eh, there's some things you'd rather have. Uh, uh, open TX access uh, uh, on that edge doesn't have. So for that reason, you might decide that you're not ready yet for edge, but as far as a vote of confidence goes, I did it. I flew, I flew my, my, my big quad with the digital system. And I, I had no fear about the operating system. I was more concerned about express LRS cause I'd never used it before. Um, I was more concerned about the platform itself, you know, the flight controller, cause I'd never flown it. And I was definitely concerned with the water. <laughs> so, uh, but as far as edge goes, I don't see any reason not to give it a go. Um, I I'll keep using it. I can tell you that it's staying on my radio. And what I kind of envision happening is, uh, I've got a test radio and I'll be migrating stuff to it. That's what I expect to end up happening. And then ultimately that winds up being production and then open TX becomes, you know, the other radios get flashed with edge and that's what will happen. All right. So let's see. Uh, 
I'll run all your videos on that back in the c coming week or two and I might install it on my T. Yeah, check all the videos out. Yeah, definitely do that. I, I would definitely recommend watching everything I've got on Edge, which is not a whole lot, but watch it and that'll help, that'll help inform your decision as well. Uh, let's see. I know you aren't, but I love your way of deep diving things and narrating it on words. I want to ask this now since I kind of missed out on your previous videos. Yeah, no worries, man. Uh, um, uh, I, I wanted to bring it up because I've been thinking about that and I don't, I I've said we a couple of times and I don't want to misrepresent anything. Like I'm not in the development crew. So I just didn't want to misrepresent myself as being part of the development team. Not that I, not that I wouldn't love to be, but you know, this way I kind of maintain some level of objectivity. So I, I do what I can to help test and give feedback and opinion. And that's it. You know, that's, that's kind of my function. And then to report what I see and learn back to you guys. So that's kind of the role that I'm trying to take. All right. Um, all right. Have a good night. Uh, pilot stray dog, straight, straight dog. got a lot of good questions, man. Thank you. Thanks for, I love the engagement. So thanks for that. Um, David Knute says I have a 161 for sale. Are you, are you selling your 161? Um, what are you going to put in it, David? Are you guys doing express? L who's doing, are you guys doing express LRS by the way? I'm I've, I've been, I've been happy with what I've seen on express LRS. I've only had some limited flying with it, but I can tell you the 2.4, Ah, uh, yeah, like no alerts, no alarms, no telemetry lost, no concerns. Everything just seemed to work. Now, I've got to push that a little bit, and I'd like to, you know, maybe look at some log data on my on my radio. But man, I had, uh, yeah, absolutely no concerns with two point four Express LRS on my first flight with it. It, it was it was done really good. Uh, Brian says I'm a Crossfire fanboy. Yeah, it's hard to argue Crossfire, man. Right. Um, very, very mature, very robust. And I can tell you my experience running crossfire receivers, I've never like, that's not a, I don't, I don't, I've told other people this. I don't think about the radio link when I run crossfire, man. That's just not, it's not even on my mind. I, I know crossfire works. So, um, but you know, express LRS is interesting and because I think, that, you know, it's open source and it's novel and, and, um, you know, it's a community project right now. So I'm, I'm happy to, uh, explore express LRS too. So, uh, stray dog, I'll definitely get into the XLRS, but a little bit, a little bit from now, I love open source stuff. It makes things affordable. All right, man, take it easy. I want to try. Yeah. I would definitely recommend trying express LRS. The cool thing about express LRS is it's not, you're not into much of a risk. Um, you got to get yourself a project box or, you know, they have the new one with the fan. I haven't tried that out yet, but it's fairly easy to assemble and, and it, it works. It integrates well. The only, you know, I've kind of had this question on my mind a little bit is, and that's the question has been around the use of the crossfire protocol. So I guess TBS is just being gracious about it, but they're using the crossfire protocol between the radio and the transmitter. And they also use it between the receiver and the flight controller. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure how they get away with that. Um, it, but, but apparently, I mean, I know TBS must know about it. Um, and I haven't seen any, any noise in the system about it. So I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I wish I knew more about that situation, but it seems like it's okay at the moment, but that's the one area of concern I have with express LRS. Uh, Am I going to make, no, <laughs> uh, props off says, am I going to make flight fest this weekend? So, unfortunately, no guys, I can't, I can't get up there for that. that's not gonna, that's not going to work out for me. Unfortunately, too many, too many obligations. When LN says got to go and fly. Thanks to have a good, one. well, good. Yeah, definitely go fly, man. Go fly. Definitely. Well, Hey guys, I think that's it. We've pretty much beat, beat it to death. We've done another little edge recap and another express LRS recap. We got the first look done on the Emax Hawk five inch racing drone. This is a sport version, 2,400 KV. It, remember what I said, if you haven't seen the video on using six S batteries on a four S quad, go check that out. Um, to me, buying four S quads gives you flexibility at this point. I don't, I, I can't find a reason not to. So I've looked, I cannot find a reason not to. It seems like a forest quad is actually the right choice because you can run both. Um, the other thing can't be said the same, right? If you get a 6S quad, you could fly it on a 4S battery, but you're not going to get the power you want. That's for sure. Um, but you can take a 4S and slow it down and run it with a 6S battery and it does work. So um, I, I'll probably be looking more at 4S uh, type motors than 6S for this size at least. Uh, David says radio master, my radio master this morning was giving me a key stuck error after being in the sun for a little while. 
it fix itself? Should I be worried? What's the fix? David, um, I had a key stuck error one time too, and it wound up being one of the button boards. I think it might have been, I don't remember which one. I think it was the six position switch board itself, um, which was no big deal to change it out. Um, I wouldn't be concerned on the first one, especially, you know, did you get any, is there any liquid involved, any moisture, any humidity, anything like that? Um, but if it, re if it repeats itself, I would definitely hunt it down like, uh, a rabid dog right and find out which one's doing it because what ended up happening for me i got a key stuck error one time and i just pressed a few buttons turned the radio on and off and it went away uh after that i got it again when i went flying it was the only radio i had and i got a key stuck error and i couldn't make it go away for like 15 minutes i pounded on the radio trying to get it to go away and it did turn out to be a faulty board so the way i sorted it out was i went into the uh the test screen and i started pressing buttons to see which one was not responding correctly so if you're not familiar with that test screen you'll click on system and then the calibrate and then you go down here to analogs and not analogs i'm sorry it's a uh, it switches keys there you go and then just start moving just start moving and looking for behavior right so you you want to go in and look and see as you press buttons i got to turn emily down there so as you move switches and buttons make sure they act accordingly exactly the way your switch does and if they don't that's probably your problem child it could be humidity could be something that simple i mean there are electrical interfaces so if you're dealing with humidity for some reason it could be that but like i said um first one's on you uh second one's on the radio okay so if you get it again hunt it down <laughs> because it will leave you stranded right when you least want it to so definitely i would i would hunt it down after that the good news is parts are cheap radio master they'll they'll support you if you got an issue open a ticket they'll help you out okay all right, guys. Well, hey, listen, I think, uh, yeah, you're welcome. Glad to help. Glad to help. Um, so I think that's it. We're at, the, we're at the bottom of the video, bottom of the content. I appreciate you guys joining me on Wednesday night for a quick look at the Emacs drone. I'll get some video on it as soon as I can. Uh, who knows what the weather? <laughs> it's still, still rainy. Believe it or not, it's still rainy. We're just in the season. It's the way it goes. So thanks for joining me. I'll get some footage up on this guy as soon as I can. And uh, that's all I've got for tonight. Take it easy.